Welcome back to my next video and this is the last part of the presentation Pentacam from the beginning. Here I will talk about introduction to ectatic corneal diseases and their progression criteria. Introduction of ectatic corneal diseases. Ectatic corneal diseases have three types. Established ectasia, which includes keratoconus, pellucid marginal degeneration, or PMD, pellucid-like keratoconus, PLK, keratoglobus, and post-LVC, which stays for laser vision correction, ectasia. Paraectasia, this is form frust keratoconus and keratoconus suspect. Corneas with high potentials, posterior keratoconus, apparently normal corneas, and unclassified abnormal. Keratoconus. Keratoconus is characterized by a combination of an abnormal anterior curvature map and abnormal posterior elevation map. Keratoconus may be also in thick corneas. As you can see here, the patient has abnormal curvature map and abnormal posterior elevation map. However, the thickness is 570 micron and this is higher than average. And in this case, you can see that there is no pathology in curvature, elevation map, posterior, anterior or pachymetry map. However, the thinness location is 472, so thin corneas don't have necessarily keratoconus. PMD is characterized by a combination of a crab claw pattern on the anterior curvature map and an abnormal posterior elevation map. Bell sign on the pachymetry map is the hallmark of PMD. PLK is characterized by a combination of a crab claw pattern on the anterior curvature map and an abnormal posterior elevation map with kissing birds pattern. There is no association with bell sign on the pachymetry map and PLK should be monitored as it can be progressed to PMD. In this slide, in this table, are the summary of the differentiation between PLK and PMD. Keratoglobus. Keratoglobus is characterized by a generalized stiffening on the anterior curvature map and generalized thinning extending from limbus to limbus. In this table are presented all clinical parameters for differentiation of keratoconus, PMD and keratoglobus based on etiology, onset, location of thinning and protrusion, scarring, clinical presentation, signs and pachymetry map. Here I would like to point a few key points. PMD is characterized by inferior band of thinning and bell sign on the pachymetry map as we already saw. Neither crab claw pattern nor kissing bird sign is a hallmark of PMD as they can be seen in the inferior type of keratoconus. In advanced cases of PMD, there is an extrapolation in corneal tomography with a limited analyzed area, which makes decision making difficult in some management modalities. Superior type of PMD has been also reported. Keratoglobus is usually congenital and rarely acquired. There is nothing specific in tomography in keratoglobus except for the generalized thinning extending from limbus to limbus. And keratoglobus in its moderate forms should be differentiated from keratoconus and PMD based on the clinical features which I mentioned earlier. Post-LVC ectasia. It usually occurs post-LASIK and rarely post-PRK and can have a pattern of any ectatic corneal diseases. Paraectasia. Those are from frust keratoconus and keratoconus suspect. They can be described by abnormal anterior curvature map with a normal posterior elevation map. Bailey Ambrosio display cannot detect form frust keratoconus and keratoconus suspect. As you can see here, the display looks absolutely normal. However, the D value is 1.96 and colored yellow. As we know, the D value normally should be less than 1.45. Corneas with high potential. Those are posterior keratoconus, keratoconus posticus or subclinical keratoconus, and they are characterized by thinning of the posterior cornea without ectasia of the anterior cornea. It can be also acquired as a result of corneal trauma, and subclinical keratoconus can be unilateral or asymmetrical bilateral and progresses if untreated. Apparently normal corneas. Those are eyes of tomographically normal corneas with positive family history of and ECDs. Unclassified abnormal corneas, 
those are abnormal corneas which do not meet the criteria of ECDs. In this table are summarized all those parameters which are being used in the literature to define progression of ECDs. One of those are also a K-max and the difference of K-max and K-minimum, which normally should be less than one diopter in follow-up for ectatic disorders. I would like also to mention that K-max is being used to detect or document ectatic progression and is regularly used as an indicator efficacy or failure after performed therapy for ECDs. There is still no normative data for K-max yet. Its location is important, which I mentioned at the very beginning of this presentation. And that was it. Uh, that was everything about Pentacam from the beginning. I hope you really enjoyed it and I hope it will be easier for you now to work with Pentacam. Thank you for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel for new upcoming videos. Till the next time, stay positive, stay healthy.